Hi everyone, welcome back to Where the Gnomes Live. This is part three of our dollar store makeover. We're turning this little wooden trunk into a miniature steamer trunk. In this video, we're going to be going over how to make the tin parts, the wooden slats, how to attach our top and bottom back together, how to attach the tin and the wooden slats to the trunk, and how to paint and stain everything. All right, I'm going to give you a quick rundown of the supplies that I used, and of course I explain all of this throughout the video. A pair of scissors and a paintbrush. Wooden coffee stir sticks. I get mine at the dollar store. Masking tape. A paper towel or a kitchen napkin. Aluminum foil. Tacky glue and a cheap glue. Instant coffee. Black paint. Burnt sienna. And a varathane. Any type of sealer will work. All right guys, we're gonna get started. In the first clip, I'm showing you how to make these tin pieces. That's the black parts. And a couple days after I had filmed this video, I ended up making these curved slats of wood. And I made these exactly the same way as I made the tin. Of course, you'd make narrower strips. And towards the end of the video, I do tell you how I stained these. So that's if you're interested in making these, you would follow the exact same steps as making the tin. And for that, we need foil a white paper napkin and masking tape and it shouldn't have any wrinkles when it's drying. To make these tin parts here I'm using aluminum foil, masking tape, a paper towel, this is a, a napkin, regular kitchen napkin, and some glue. This is regular white glue and if it's a little bit thick I just put a little bit of water and I'll just put a tablespoon or so of water and I'm going to mix that up. It just makes it easier for brushing on because this glue is kind of on the thick side and I don't want it to rip the paper towel. A little bit more runny there, so that's what I wanted. All right, now I'm gonna take the foil and I'm going to make strips. So I'm gonna fold this over about two and a half inches or so. I'm gonna fold it over again. My first strip, now I wanna make one more the exact same width. So I just open this up. There's my original fold. So there's the original width. Now I'll fold this one in half. So when you do the two pieces, it doesn't matter which width you make them. Just make sure that both of them are the same width when you're done. The one thing you have to keep in mind is the foil strips that you make have to be more narrow than your masking tape that you're working with. I have extra wide masking tape, so it works out for me to make wider strips of tin. So if you have narrow masking tape, then you'll have to make narrow strips of foil. Now that we have that part figured out, we're going to cover it with masking tape. There's going to be a good side, that's the side that you're looking at. And then the bad side is the side that you, you glue to the trunk when you're all done. I'm just going to place this right over the middle. And now I'll roll over the sides. I just want to cover up some of the foil in the back because I'm going to be putting paper towel on this and I want it to have something to stick to. It doesn't have to be perfect in the back. So now I'm going to cover these in paper towel or napkin, whatever you have on hand. So if this was like a two or three ply, you'd want to take one of the plies off. I want to get it down more to size here. Paint and glue on the good side first. Take one of those strips and lay it over top and smooth it out. I'm going to turn it over. I'm going to trim these down. Now I'll put glue on the back side. And then roll the towel over. Now I'm painting the good side with the glue again. And just make sure the edges are sticking down. And I'll leave that dry and I'll do the other one now. That's dry enough to paint. I'm not going to put any extra glue on the back because that's going to be glued to the trunk anyway. 
Now I'm going to use my black and paint all this top and the sides. Get the sides as well. Alright, that's dry enough to work with and I did already cut my pieces and they're cut to fit on the sides and I'll be touching up the paint as well because I see some of the black is coming off there. When you do cut them you have to touch up the ends with black paint so I've already done that. All my ends have been painted so you don't see any of the foil sticking through. So now all we have to do is just glue them into place and I'm going to use tacky glue. I thought I had to put something on here to hold both sides down, but it looks like just pressing them into place is going to hold them there. So that's good. And on the top, I'm going to be doing the sides. So it's going to go all the way around. So I think what I have to do is... What did I do in this one? Looks like I cut the sides. Okay, so I'm going to do that here. I'll glue this into place and of course it, I'm going to have to touch up the paint here, which is no big deal. So I did that. And now I'm going to seal it in with uh, Varathane. So I'm just going to go over the whole thing, even the black parts. Alright guys, just popping in with an edit to make everything as clear as possible. That Varathane went over all the parts of the trunk, the black part. Even if I had paper on the cover, I Varathane that. I also varathane the inside of this one. You don't have to do the same thing. I just like the surface that it gave me. In the next clip, we're going to be staining our wooden stir sticks. If you made the fake wood to do these curved pieces, you stain it the exact same way. So you'd be using instant coffee. And to stain this, I think I used about four or five coats. So you just keep adding the coats until you get the color that you like. And the other thing I wanted to mention was when I cut these tin pieces here, I cut those little triangles, on these curved tops, I didn't have to do that. I just messed around with it until I got it into the place that I wanted. And I actually pushed it onto the tabletop. And I didn't have to cut anything. And that kind of looks like the real tin, because they used to hammer tin into place, right? So it looks like hammer marks. And then I was good to go. Now I'm going to stain my stir sticks. These are those coffee stir sticks. And this is instant coffee. I got about a tablespoon of instant coffee in there and then just a little bit of hot water to uh, get it down to a stain. Now you can do any sort of stain for your sticks. I like coffee st stain because of the rich color I can get. The only thing is you have to seal it in after because it will rub off. So when I'm all done I have to put a clear coat on top. Popping in with another edit. This is about the hinges. When I first did these hinges, it worked out beautifully because I painted the trunk and I could see the original screw holes there. So I just had to put them back on top of the screw holes and put the screws in. I worked on another trunk before I finished this video and I did the same thing, but my trunk was covered in paper so I could no longer see those screw holes. When I put my hinges on, I just put the top and the bottom together screwed everything in and then when I was finished the trunk would only close to about there. So I messed around with it for a while and then I realized if I had a little bit of a space between the top and the bottom before I put the hinges on then it would work. So I took a piece of cereal box, put it in between the top and the bottom, then squeezed them together, put the hinges on, that solved the problem and now my trunk closes. So I'm just cutting the pieces to fit across. These are the wooden slats. On the ends, I'm dabbing a little bit of burnt sienna just to cover up that whitish look. Because I cut the sticks so the inside here is not stained. And I should add that when my sticks were still drying with the coffee stain, I did take this burnt sienna and I rubbed it in between my fingers and just ran it along. Because I wanted to give it a little bit more of a reddish look. These ones here, this is just coffee stain, and this has burnt sienna in it, these ones here. 
and see the difference in color. And I did varnish these when I varnished the trunk. All right, guys, so the next step would be to glue your sticks in place. And this is an edit because I did a few different ones here. And you can put them in any position that you want to. I would suggest looking online at Antique Trunks. And you'll see all the different ways that they've uh, put down the wooden slats. So use a tacky glue. This will work best. Of course, put it on the back. And all you have to do is push it into place with your fingers and then just set it aside and leave it dry. Once that glue is dry, these are stuck on there really good. And these round ones here are not wood, of course, because I wouldn't be able to bend those over a dome top, so I had to make them. And I made them the same way I made the tin. So foil, masking tape, and then paper towel. And then I did a coffee stain over that. And again, once the coffee stain is dry, you have to seal it in. If you have a brush on sealer like I had, you have to just do one quick brush stroke and then leave it dry. You don't want to be rubbing back and forth because you'll just rub off the coffee stain. And I don't know if I mentioned it or not, you have to seal in coffee stain before you glue anything to it because coffee stain and glue kind of counteract each other. And anything that you glue over coffee stain will just pop off. So definitely need to seal it in before you attempt to glue anything to it. And again, I used a tacky glue to glue these into place. Alright guys, that brings us to the end of this video. In the next one, part four, it's popping up on your screen. We'll make the handles and the hardware, and I'll show you how to attach those. I'll meet you over there.